So we have we have a few different ways of looking at work orders and, and requests. Um, I like this one where we've made some buckets. And again, this can be customized uh, easily just from the front end here directly if I wanted to, to recategorize my, my work orders. But here I've taken all the work orders and, and said how many days have they been open? Zero to two days, two to five, or five to 14. And you can say um, an urgent work, work order that's been open between five to 14 days is probably a, a work order I take a, a closer look at. And here I can see that it's that work order 104 again. And that's blinking up with a with a red light because it's been open for ten days, and it was uh, urgent. However, the uh, the criticality was rated as low, so seems a little, you know, um, against my expectations. But but uh, again, I might want to go back to Wesley and ask how come it's a, it's a low critical uh, criticality, but it's 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 urgent in priority. Um, so we have, you know, a number of, of CAN dashboards and then the data model here really allows you to, to build new um, dashboards on the flyers as well. So if I wanted to just build a new one here using what we are, are making available, I might want to look at my uh, proportion of active versus uh, closed work orders. So I would pull in maybe a uh, pie chart. Um, let's just put it down here in my work area so it kind of follows the, uh, the design guidelines as I set up. Um, and then I'll look for active and take my active dimension. And then I want to see by total work orders in this case. So if I search total, I get quite a few measures, total customers, total acquisitions. Um, but right now I'm interested in my total work orders. So I'll pull that as well. And then I have my first little pie chart where I can see the number of total work orders and, and closed work orders. Um, let's look at the priority as well. And I think I'll take something different here, like a tree map. Um, and then I'll take again my total work orders and then spread it out by priority. I'll take the uh, priority name. And now, of course, it's starting to, to come to life here. Um, so I can see I have a lot in the medium and high priority. And then I also want to look at my work orders and who created them. So I'll go in and search created by again. And uh, let's add a bar chart like this. And we'll take created by, and again, actually I, I didn't mark the right object there. And again, I'll take the total work orders. So you can see I can search um, quite a bit in, in the data model and we have uh, a lot in there as well. And I didn't want this one, so I'll just get rid of that. And then I want to add my total work orders up here. And then I can see that it's almost neck to neck between Wesley Nelson and, and Thomas Crow in terms of creative work orders. Um, and now I can, I can start analyzing my data in this new little dashboard. So if I look at Wesley Nelson, um, he has a lot of the uh, uh, active work orders and he's primarily, primarily having medium and high priority work orders no critical, a single urgent, uh, and that's about it. If we look at Thomas Crow, he has a lot of the critical and urgent work orders, some high and some medium. So maybe I just need to take his work orders with a, uh, a grain of salt because everything is urgent and, uh, and critical, it seems. Um, or maybe that's another reason. Actually, I'm kind of curious to see if he is doing more of the uh, corrective work orders than, than Wesley. And maybe that's why it's urgent. We have a breakdown, uh, production stop, and we just need to, yeah, to, to get on it. Um, so then I'd want another object um, 
let's pick a donut chart here just to to keep it interesting um, and then i wanted to see type so i need the word order type name is this one and again the total work orders so now i have it there and then let's look at uh, wesley and he is heavily skewed towards the preventive so uh, he has 30 percent here is is preventive work orders if i click on thomas then I can see that now all of a sudden it's primarily corrective work orders. Um, so it appears that, that there might actually be something to that uh, hypothesis that, uh, that Thomas, he puts in the work orders when there's a, uh, a problem, whereas uh, Wesley is primarily um, scheduling my, my preventive uh, work. So like that, you know, I've built a new dashboard and I could uh, save that and then everyone Again, depending on the user rights we just discussed before, would have access to this. So if if uh, if Thomas is only working in, in one location, then uh, Wesley wouldn't be able to see it. Again, if I have um, limited their, their access to data. Uh, but you can see over here that we have you know, quite a bit in the data model to, to work with. And these are the table names, so you might not be so familiar with them, but um, that's so it's easy for us to kind of backtrack it um, until we do a deployment at a customer site and we'll make sure that these are uh, renamed and relabeled to the uh, uh, the names that you're using in AX 